And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Cubitos from AEG and John D. Clare. Now, the AEG-John D. Clare combination is one that is always interesting to me. AEG puts out only a few games over the course of the year, but I find that their games are usually quite good, and John D. Clare has made some of my favorite games. So I was very interested in this one, especially its cubes. Now, the cover itself, which looks like a German SpongeBob, I'm not really sure what's going on there. That's kind of a weird thing, and this game is about a race of cubes. It's like, hey, uh, we're taking the theme of cubes, and everything's cubes, cubes, cubes. But what this actually is, is it's a dice-building game or a bag-building game. There's no bag. Think of a deck-building game like Dominion, except in this case, you're using dice instead of cards. And it's a race. Now, that sounds maybe a little confusing, or it sounds like something you may have heard of before. I don't disagree. Let's take a look at how the game works, and then we'll be back. In this game, you are racing. You each have your own little cube racer, and you're going to race around a, a track. There are four different tracks included with the game, each of them having different types of terrain and different spaces you can land on with a start line and a finish line. There's also going to be various cubes of different colors. There are eight different colors, and each of these colors comes with different cards, and you're going to pick a set of cards. There are seven cards per color, uh, and so the, the book comes with like a set of eight that you can use, although you can pick any eight that you want to uh, when playing the game. Each round of the game, players are going to take dice from their draw pile and put it into their roll area. Now at the beginning of the game, you're just going to start with these very basic dice, these light gray dice, which simply have a coin on one of their six sides, and the dark gray dice, which have a coin on one side and a foot on the other. And so what you do, and everyone does this simultaneously, you're going to take nine of the dice from your draw pile, which at the beginning of the game is all of them, and you'll move it over to your roll pile. Then you roll. So you'll take your dice and you roll. Any die that shows something automatically gets moved to your active pile. At this point, you can stop or you can roll again. You can kind of push your luck. Now, that's not a problem, but once you have three dice here in the active pile, if all the sides I roll are blank, I bust it. Well, let's try it here. Whew, I got another one. Now, I could stop or keep rolling. I'm feeling lucky. All right, good. I got another one. Only four dice left. I'm still feeling lucky. Woo! What a good roll. Here I bust. When you bust, all the dice that you have are discarded. And you are allowed to take as many of the dice in the roll area and move them to the discard pile if you want to also. But let's say I decided not to roll one more time. At that point, you're going to be able to use your dice. Each foot that you roll is going to let you move on the track one space. And these coins that you get is a virtual currency which will let you buy more dice. Now, you don't block other people's path when moving on the board, so it doesn't really matter. So you can move any way you want. You're going forward or moving diagonally around the board. Sometimes there's special features here. If I land here, I might be able to jump here. Sometimes you land on a spot, you can get rid of a die. Other times you'll be able to get a die that costs four or less here. There are different spots on the board that give you uh, these chips here. And these chips are essentially money, but you can save it from turn to turn. You saw, for example, that I rolled five coins this turn. That's virtual currency, and I have to use it this turn or lose it. But if I get these chips, I'll be able to keep them. So that's great. I'll be able to buy dice and move. But what if I bust it? I get nothing. Well, you do get nothing, but at least you move one spot on this track here. Now, as you move along on this track, there's a little reward you get, I guess, or compensation. You get some of this currency that you'll be able to save, and then you can get these little tokens here, which will increase your hand size. And then, of course, like I said, there are other dice that you can buy, and you can buy these as long as they are available. So I might say, ooh, I have five. I can buy up to two dice of two different colors. So I might want to buy the Fat Cat. This shows you the different sides of the Fat Cat die. 
It has a foot in two sides, and it has a picture of a cat on the other. And when I roll that cat, I do the run section here, which says get a coin, and I get another gray die, and three feet. Oh, man, that's great. Now, it's only on one of six sides, but that's pretty good for five. Or I might buy the bench warmer, which has two different sides to the die. When I roll those, I lose it. And another die. So if I want to get rid of some basic dice out of my deck so I can use just the colored dice. The wizard here, each time you push and do not bust. So I press my luck, I get money. Huh, that's interesting. But if I roll the dog symbol, I lose the die. And of course, as they get more expensive, they get better. The red dice with the swords, at the end of each round, you'll compare whoever has rolled the most swords. In this case, you compare and you'll get money equal to your flag account count, which is that space that you move on when you bust. So if you're really far on that track, this die could be pretty handy. And like I said, each of these has different things in it. So like, just compare the blue ones here. This one costs eight, but when you roll the symbol, you get three and you move up on that track here. Here, after you move step, gain one reward space that's two, one or two space away. So when you're moving around the track, you can get something that's close to you. Here you can roll all your gray and white dice in your draw and roll zones. Gain two feet. These feet can be used to go into the water spaces. Normally you can't move into water, but this undercover fish allows you to do that. And so you can see there's a whole pile of combos out here. So that's pretty much the game. You're going to be rolling and then using your dice or busting, moving these dice to discard. When you need to draw, if you don't have enough dice in your draw, all the discard dice come back. And hopefully you'll be getting more dice and cooler dice to go as the game goes by. Moving on the track here, you'll notice there's these red lines. These red lines are important because if you are a certain number of red lines behind the leader, let's say it's like this, white is one red line behind the leader, so white increases their hand size by one, yellow by two, and blue by four because they're that far back. But at the end of the game, it is just the first person across the finish line who is the winner. I am of a mixed mind about the components for this game. Overall, I think they're fine. There's really nice dice here. These dice are the same kind of dice and size that you would have seen maybe in uh, AEG's other game, Space Base, or in a game, Quarriers. The pictures are really funky and weird, and they have uh, weird names on them, but the symbology is very clear. Some of the cards have a extra four dots around the symbol, and there's a few cards that will also activate that. So this one here, this one when this is active, blah, blah, blah. And this is also active when this one is done too. So there's a few things like that. The symbology works pretty well. Where I have a big problem are these things. Now I know why these are in the game. Because the game is Cubitos and it's all about cubes. And the rule book itself, which by the way, very well written rule book. At the end of the rule book it has explanations of how each card works. But here in the back, there's these dice box assembly and they tell you how to put this together. This is really hard because what happens is you need to push down on this because what they want this to be is, hey, it's a place to store these cubes during the, you know, when you're not playing the game. And then when you are playing the game, you put them here. But this just does not fold well. It is, it is not good. I was very disappointed with how this worked out. And after this review, I'll be getting rid of these boxes. I don't think they're useful at all. The, and also, and this is a weird little thing, the game comes with this token here. It says this is how the game plays. You roll, you draw, you roll, you move hits. And then this is the run phase on how that works. Use abilities, move, buy, discard. Okay, pretty simple. And then you have this here. I do not know why these are separate. Why is this just stuff not listed here at the top of this board? I found that to be a little odd. Now, that's it. Again, I'm complaining about extra stuff. Again, the dice, the colors, the, the cards themselves, all of that works really well. So overall, I'm very happy with the components.
Now this game here definitely is a bit of a Frankenstein of a game. Uh, the, the dice and the cubes and the different sides has a very strong remembrance of quarriers or dice masters. Uh, the racing around the track calls back another game from AEG where they did the planes, trains, and automobiles series. The automobiles series was where you pulled dice or cubes from a bag and raced your cars around the track. So it has some similarities to that. And it's also similar to the very popular game Quacks of Quedlingburg, where you can kind of push your luck uh, by rolling the dice over again. And yet these things work together to make a very good game. Now, the reason I'm not putting this game at the height of excellence is because there is some fiddliness moving those dice around. And I don't really know how they could fix it. You have this track here and you take the dice and you move nine over here, then you roll those dice down here, then they come back up here and some come over here, then they move over here, then come back to here. And that feels like it should be smooth, but it's not. A lot of games like Dominion have a deck or if it's a dice building game or something, there's usually a bag you throw the dice in, but they want you to be able to pick your dice. So that's kind of neat. But because you're picking your dice, I almost wish that the picking your dice wasn't there and there just was a bag you pulled dice out of. It would make the game slightly less strategic, but also slightly less fiddly. And so I find that a little bit of a, a, a dissidence in the game, but I do feel also that as time goes by, perhaps my rating for this game will go up because I really do enjoy it. I'm a big fan of deck building games anyway. A game where I get to pick different dice is really fun. The game where the dice are different each time and then combining that with a race makes this really fun. And then you throw in a mechanism that I like and hate. I mean, I like it, but I'm really bad at it and that's push your luck. So the push your luck aspect of this is very good, right? If you roll your dice at the beginning and you roll all blanks, you don't bust. You can't bust till you get at least three faces. So that's a good thing, right? You're not going to bust on your first roll. Well, oh, just bad luck. No, you, you, might, you still might have bad luck, but if you get three faces or f on your first roll and that's it, you have the ability to stop. Yes, it's not great. Yes, you might not be able to get anything fantastic and maybe just move your die one space or so, but you could get something. And then you decide to push it farther than that. Also, the racetrack's very interesting. As you move your cube around the track, you can move uh, usually a longer way around, but hit those bonus spots, or you can just cut for the chase and try to win the game, but you're not getting as much stuff as the other people. This all comes together in a really nice way, and everyone can play simultaneously. Now, there is points in the game where it might matter, and the game then says, all right, then you take turns in turn order. Like, maybe there's only one red die left, and multiple people want to buy it. Or maybe I'm really concerned about how I'm going to move. Am I going to take a shorter area? It depends on how you move. Then that matters. But I found that those cases are very few and far between. So most of the time, you can just all simultaneously go. You all roll until someone busts or stays in. You all then move on the track. You all buy new dice. And you go to the next round. Games are not long. Every game's different. You know the expandabilities here. They don't even have to add more dice to the game. They can just add like six more cards for each color. And so all that combines to make a game that I really like. And I feel that if I keep playing this game, it could move into that I really love this game. This is just kind of, it almost feels like it's tailor-made for me. And so there's a lot of excitement here. Yes, there's some missteps like these cube boxes and things like that. And the theme almost feels more tacky than anything else. Like, everything's a cube. I, I don't care. Um, but underneath it, the mechanisms are interesting and fun. And yes, they're a combination of stuff that we've seen before, but it's done in a really good way. I think this one's going to be fairly popular. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this one if they buy it despite the cover. So check it out. That's Cubitos. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs> <laughs>